Hey guys, welcome back to the series, How to Use Harmor. This is gonna be video number six and we're gonna be talking about the Unison. So let's open up a default patch here and Unison is gonna be located in the middle of the section here. So Unison is basically adding different voices to the, uh, to the synth and Harmor goes up to nine. Let's bring that up here a little bit. And there's a couple different modes that we have. It goes default on blurred. So starting from the top, we have classic. So they're all pretty different. Uh, my personal favorite is classic. It defaults on blurred, but I kind of always end up changing it to classic. And then we have this little alt button here at the bottom, which sounds like it introduces some phase. So if we go down to, let's say, order of three, and let's crank our pan, this first slider all the way up, and let's take a listen to that. Now with it on. And we can see a lot happening down here. With it off. With it on. So anyway, moving on, let's go to classic and let's bring this back up to nine to kind of demonstrate some of the different sliders we have here. So this first one pan that we talked about. Kind of spreads them out, pretty uh, self-explanatory. Then we have the pitch or more commonly known as detune. So if we don't have any detune or any different type of phase, then it's basically just going to make it louder. And then next up we have the phase. So this is going to be the different phases of the voices and the best way to demonstrate that is let's go to an order of three, for example, let's drop this down about two octaves here. So what we're going to be looking at is over in this section here, we can see this pattern start to appear. So right here, you can kind of see how this pattern looks the same here once it kind of repeats. Now when we change this phase knob, that same pattern is going to appear, but just a different timing of that. So that's the best visual explanation of that that I that I thought of for this but what's really cool is if we go back to default and let's go maybe up to a seven or something we have a unison if we go all the way to the top we have a thing called full blur and it's kind of hard to notice because it's not it's it's a totally different kind of feature I think it has a different sound so here's 99 here's full blur it almost sounds even on the higher notes that it adds kind of a noise to it so here's 99, so it's off and on. We could probably hear a little bit better. Let's do a, uh, let's do a high pass here. So here's kind of just the, the voices here. It's very high up there, maybe like, probably about up here. It's a subtle effect, but it definitely helps, I think, with super saws. And then if you go maybe down to a little bit, uh, let's see, let's go down like two octaves, two octaves or something. It's probably easier here for that. All right, so moving on with these different types of knobs here, you can have different articulators. So let's go ahead and do a default. So if we put our order back up to nine, I'd like to go to classic. And then for the middle one, the detune, let's go to edit articulator. 
And we can put a uh, an envelope on here. And this is basically saying when, as far as like how long after you press the note, do you want to have these detuned? So if we had something kind of maybe down here and then let's put a knob up here. So first sounds like a single note because nothing's getting detuned. But then at the top there, everything's full detuned. That's a little demonstration of that. And then if we go to the phase, we can go to edit articulator. And this is going to say basically keyboard mapping as far as like changing the phase for different notes. Because this here is all going to be your keyboard. You'll see the different... Uh, different notes. So there's like the lighter ones, the darker ones, lighter ones, darker notes. That basically represents your keyboard. So let's go back to a default here. And there's a couple things that we talked about in the last video that uh, I kind of think we should maybe re-talk about here. So if we go to, let's say, an order of two, for example, let's go back to classic. Now, if we go down to pitch and then we go to unison index mapping, which is the third from the bottom here. So what we're going to see is this note here on the very far left is going to be our first voice and then the second one is going to be the second. So if we zoom in a little bit on this here and make sure our snapping is on, we can hear our two voices. If we bring this one up here, maybe 700 cents, so a fifth, we can see that we're changing the pitch of that individual, uh, individual voice. And we, can, we can tell much more once the, uh, the panning is all the way up, the lows in the left and the highs in the right. And then if we go up to number three, now it's going to be, this is going to be the first one, the middle one's going to be the second voice, and then the end is going to be the third. So you're going to have to redo your uh, patches there. So that's going to be, we did seven, and then we'll go up here for a uh, an octave at the top here. So that's going to be 1,200 cents. So our fundamental note, up 700 cents, so uh, a fifth, and then up an octave here. And then we go to four, and now the graph kind of makes more sense. So one, two, three, four, and then you can go all the way up to nine, and you can see the graph increases. That sounds horrible because we have to redo all of our notes if we change up our voices there. So something to, something to keep in mind. So next up, we have a very cool thing. And if we go to unison, uh, harmonic unison pitch. So this thing's very cool. So let's turn on our voices up to nine. And let's start to raise this knob here. Now, if you listen on the top end, you can hear a lot of different type of phase cancellation going on. And it's even more noticeable if we do stuff with bass. So let's go down two octaves and let's turn this down here to the center for normal. Kind of what you would expect, but as soon as we bring this up, we get that texture to it. And this is telling you, uh, if you look on the top left here, you can see like what octaves is the, uh, is a harmonic unison pitch getting changed. So you can kind of make this curve a little bit tighter here. And this is something that begs for some distortion. So my favorite one is rubber. And that's pretty much the most part of the unison. I really kind of wanted to show you some of the cooler parts as far as like the unison pitch, what we just talked about, and also the uh, the different pitches with the different voices. So remember, go down to pitch here, and then unison index mapping. So with basically with all these voices, you can make power chords, you can make a, ma a minor chord, a major chord, major seven. It really depends on how many how many uh, voices you have and how many chords you have. So if you have a chord that has four notes in it, you're going to need to have four voices and so on and so forth. And also make sure to uh, pay attention to the pan because like, for example, as we talked about earlier, if we have an order of two and we bring this up to one octave, it's going to be a hard pan. So the fundamental the first note is going to be the left and the high ones in the right. So kind of just keep in mind how you're going to balance out those different voices if you do do the uh, different pitch changes. So this is going to be it for the unison section. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. So thanks for watching.